Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Minute. It's your daily podcast in which we analyze, we scrutinize, and we celebrate the rise of Skywalker one minute at a time. I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I'm Pete the Retailer from petetheretailer.com. And I'm Crystal Beth from denver.com. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time buying that one, but I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> yeah, it's that's not, I don't even know if that's actually a website. Yeah, I'm but if it is, it's not mine. Yeah, <laughs> it's either like John Denver, Bob Denver, or the city of Denver. City of or Denver. <laughs> Denver pile. <laughs> well, I haven't updated the crystalbet.com, so I felt bad using it, but maybe mm. I'll just keep with it. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for returning. Queen of the minutes, Crystal Beth. Thanks for having me. I miss everyone so much. We're talking about minute 71 of The Rise of Skywalker. Entering the 70s, we start off on the planet of Kif Beer, where Dio and BB-8 are taunting a herd of Jerry Orbox. Mm-hmm. And it ends a minute later with, uh, Jumpy Janna said the Battle of Anset Island was bad. <laughs> How bad was it? Sorry. The Battle of Anset Island was so bad, they told us to f- blank. <laughs> they told us to f- blank. <laughs> so uh everyone between this episode and tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna write down our answers i'm gonna do mine now so i don't forget mm-hmm. i and have mine written in my notes I'll, I'll write it on a proper placard or whatever for tomorrow all right but. i'm gonna have to think about it because i have no idea what you <laughs> might be about to say um hey minute 71 you know what that means what it's the halfway point wow this there are 142 minutes in this movie and we've we've we're covering half of them now. This is this is it. Wow, halfway point. Yeah. You want to know a fun fact? What's Please. that? The very first minutes I ever did were seventy one to seventy five uh, for Ooh. the um, Return of the Jedi. Wow! Oh, wow! Look at that ring theory. Yeah, it's what a coincidence! Right there, hmm. <laughs> little bookend. <laughs> That's your, your neighborhood of the movie. Yeah, I'm the halfway point. I'm midway. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we have to do 71 of every minute from now here on out. I wish we yeah. figured that out earlier, but uh, oh well. <laughs> from here on out. Yeah. Uh, Orbax. Orbax. The horse now, things with pig faces. Yeah. That, that sounds cruel. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, point of order. It's, pl- it's not a planet. It's a moon. Mm. Kef beer. But, um, You're right. I apologize for all the... Moon heads out there. Do <laughs> how do you Dio saying hello to an Orbac and then getting growled at? Is this Dio saying hello to it? Is this is this cute? Do we do we think this is cute? Crystal, I think, you it, can is, go I think it is. The aim is cuteness. Cute is what they aim for. My the aim, aim is cute. cute. But it, it's my favorite cute. Elvis Costello album. Yeah. My aim is cute. Anyway. I think it's cute. I think it's a really shy droid and thinks it can make a new friend. And it's like, no, thank you. Oh, God. No, yeah. no, not for me. Which I kind of understand that because sure, horses are, you never saw a horse before and you saw a horse in real life. That's it's terrifying. Uh, you, even if you have. Yeah. I mean, They're in my, in my, you know, I'm, big. you know, notoriously afraid of things, but um, <laughs> I feel like. You know, even if like I've ridden on horses before, and still, if I approach a horse, I'm terrified. So, <laughs> my dog. We were once walking down the down the sidewalk, and someone had left their motorcycle helmet on the sidewalk, and my mm. dog was freaking out, barking at it as if it was the worst intruder it had ever seen. So, <laughs> <laughs> don't know why. So, I can only imagine how he would react to a little uh, Dio rolling around. So, right. Um, hmm. are you a Dio oh, so your fan, dog Crystal? is the horse in this case, not the yeah. not Dio. Okay. What was that? I said, are you a Dio uh, fan generally? Yeah, I think so. It's not my favorite droid, mm-hmm. but I do Who's appreciate your favorite some... droid. R two D two. It's hard not to. She's so badass. <laughs> um, <laughs> Those rockets and everything. I think so. that. <laughs> Yeah, and he's just always there, and he's always so helpful and understanding, and you know the yeah. entirety of Star Wars rests upon his little dome. He knows what just um, when to play a sentimental hologram when it's needed. Mm. Yeah, exactly. He's a good DJ. <laughs> yeah, but I think Dio's good. I I appreciate his anxiety. 
That's I feel like I always like to think that I'd be someone really cool in the Star Wars universe, but I'd probably be an anxious droid. <laughs> yeah, I long ago came to terms with him like, oh, I'm the C-3PO. I get it. Yep. <laughs> I think I would be like a really powerful Sith Lord. Mm. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm interpreting your, never... your silence as, as agreeing with me, so. Yeah, it's, it's respect. <laughs> They're showing you respect. Yeah, you don't dare contradict me because you know right. the consequences. Yeah, I'm afraid to get choked. I have some information about the uh, Orbax. For sure. You. There's not too much. Most of what's in the um, award-winning visual dictionary, you can probably surmise from you know their from uh, their appearance, their herbivores, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, they are related. So this is something that seems contradictory. They're not native to this moon. Hmm. Uh, because there are Orbax on several other planets, so they're not quite sure where they originated. However, they do say they are related to Bordox, Pulgas, Triss, and of course, Fantheers. Hmm. Who we, that's oh, the only uh, one I can identify of that list. Do you guys know any of the other creatures? I can um, Google it. <laughs> nah, I feel like it's just like every time they need a stand in for a horse, they just make up a new name and it's probably all those. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> they're just like, well, we don't want to just have them riding a horse, but. Uh, it makes sense to me that they are not native to this moon because remember the the um, ecology of this moon, the ge- geography and the, uh, the climate, everything about this moon, the terrain just changed drastically post Death Star explosion. So I it's, buy that. You used to be an ocean, there, mostly though? ocean world. Yeah. Ship. I guess so. You think they flew That's their own ship? That's my guess. <laughs> are they, it just because we can't understand their language, but they're a race of sentient horse people, and they flew their own ship there, and then oh, they got sure. just like all of a sudden these other people go like, "Hey, there's some horses!" Like, what? Pardon me? And then they're just getting ridden to death. And you know the people kind of suspect, but they just don't want to. They don't want to look too right. closely at their uh... right. Oh, look, she's so smart talking about the horse and the horses. <laughs> just gonna, you know. Look, she's trying to what write letters on the ground. S- <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I just got so excited thinking about how they would steer a ship. Do you think it'd be like a goo mm. or something they put their hooves in? Oh. Mm. Or if they did it with their minds, I think it would oh, be maybe. like two two like ropes, and they go like right. It's like, like yeah. they have brains. That's all they're used right. to, so they only use brains. <laughs> or like a steering wheel, they could bite. Yeah, <laughs> like that. yeah. Activate the giddy up. <laughs> <laughs> Just the forge. Whoa. <laughs> Activate the giddy up. <laughs> Uh, I looked up the, the, the one thing they do say is the lifespan of these Orbox is 15 years, which seems mm. short to me because they're usually yeah. bigger animals. Although I don't know if that's true. Bigger yeah. animals have. So I looked up various animals lifespans. If everyone wants to get bummed out contemplating uh, dumb animals. I mean, the deaths of mm. animals. Uh, do you want to hear some? Yes, do. horses. How long do horses live? Horses live 25 to 30 years All right. on Earth. Wow. Um. So they have half the lifespan of horses. Well, that, yeah. Okay. So weasels, one to two years. Wolverines, wow. ironically, a what? paltry 12 years. Hmm. So what? Uh, Poor weasels. <laughs> yeah. You think, you think that's bad? You should be a mayfly. They only get 24 hours. They get 24 mm. hours to live their complete existence on Earth. This sounds like a, like wow. a coming of age movie waiting to happen. It's like in the next Pixar <laughs> movie. Should, is, yeah, uh, it should totally be a Pixar movie that's like dazed and confused or something like that, but yeah, it's a mayfly with, just kind of like. Yeah, we should do one about bugs. <laughs> uh, tigers, 14 years. Gorillas, hmm. 35 years. Hmm. Wow. Elephants, 56 years. Female mosquitoes, two to three weeks. Okay. So, it's too long. I especially don't feel bad about killing them now because like, what were they going to do in two or three weeks? You know, Write Beethoven's oh, next nothing. symphony? Yeah, they 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 were like you know a third of the way through their novel when you when you yeah carelessly They've smashed earned them. a few badges on Babel. <laughs> hmm. Uh, <laughs> Pete, I picked out this one for you: the long fin eel, mm. sixty years. See, and in fact, they wow. had one in captivity that lived for eighty years. Mm. An eighty-year-old eel. What did that eel do for so long? <laughs> he wrote his novel. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, we have the immortal jellyfish, which is a, a jellyfish that is approximately two meters big. And uh, as far as they can tell, they they just keep regenerating their cells, the same creature. So it's essentially Whoa. immortal. Unless it gets eaten, it will live forever. Sounds like so, a challenge. 
That's the DNA we should be trying to put into humans. That why are right. we someone get on that study? Yeah. Who who I don't Jellyfish know man. forever. Yeah. We'd be iridescent. <laughs> mm. That part sounds nice. <clears throat> um so I have a uh we we cut from the Dio in the Orbox. A Dio in the Orbox, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um the fifties cruise opening for Sha yeah. Na. <laughs> um to they're fixing the Falcon. And and hey, speaking of speaking of uh, uh, you know anxious droids kind of uh, uh, being and and humans treating things poorly, um, C three PO is like, wait, you you guys do this all the time? Like, oh, this is madness. And Poe is just you know like not even addressing him. He's like, did but did we ever find his volume control? Like, <laughs> uh, being verbally abusive to C three PO right in front of him. And like, I, I, they had such an opportunity here. It was a, you know sure. C-3PO, as he was, irritated them. Fresh start. He just got rebooted. They could have been like, hey, like, start over. You know what I mean? Like, let's get, let's be nice to him from the get-go. Let's tell him, like, nicely when he's irritating us. And maybe a little bit, you know, like, instead of just, they just go back straight to their abusive kind of uh, inconsiderate ways. And they're just like, you know, he's like, oh, this is, and they're like, shut up, yellow. And like, <laughs> yellow. And uh, uh, that's, that's my impersonation of a Star Wars guy. Shut up, Yellow. <laughs> Star Wars guy. <laughs> of a Star Wars guy. Yeah, it made me think how many times, I don't know if anyone's ever counted, but how many times 3PO has been told to be quiet, to shut down, to switch off, mm. to turn his volume down. That is something the next time I do a watch through, I'm going to count how many times mm. because I don't think it's few. I think it is many. Do a shot every time. <laughs> do a shot every time. Oh, man. What a wow. good game. I'm down. I feel like you, playing. And you got to do it in... I, I know this goes against every fiber of my being, but you got I think you got to do it in chronological order. So you start when he gets built, because then yes. it builds up slowly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think it's a while before anybody starts being rude to him. Like prequels, you yeah. probably be all right. So I can do the prequels during the day and then get ready to get wrecked exactly. at night. It'd be perfect. <clears throat> prequels are pre game there. Yeah, it makes me feel bad. He just, he's literally, one of the last things he said was that he was looking at his friends and everyone's all mean to him now. It's. Really sad. I, they were mean to him then too. It's just like they like really the only one who like is acting any differently about C three PO. C three PO. We talked about that at the even during the reboot. They're just like, can we get this over with? Like just, Ugh. you know, they're, they're not they're not considerate of his feelings or his his uh, not his feelings. What is another word I'm looking for there? I don't know. Emotions. But they have no, 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 no none. Uh, no, something word spared for c3po <laughs> we're to be determined later yeah <clears throat> it'll be my well, other match game film maybe they're annoyed because i think c3po's line is so funny because it includes the you know he says does everybody like this for you people which is mm. both sympathetic and also condescending because he's like you know <laughs> i'm not part of this but you people this is what you do all the time and right. so everyone loves when they're part of a you people group so maybe they are a little <laughs> bit uh, a bit huffier with him than uh than normally, right. but I think that line is so funny, and I, I I'm so glad 3PO gets some good good comedy bits in this uh, in this film. Yes, it is a good movie for him. Do you think 3PO does have a volume control, like an external one where someone can actually? Do you think those things on his neck are like volume? Uh... <laughs> I think it's his, his nipples. Oh. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> I mean, it would be weird that it would be a physical external thing if it was a volume control. It should be like, you know, Alexa, Alexa. or whatever, where you're just yes. like, yeah. C-3PO, you know, volume eight, like, or my well, we kids, know he has so a... just like, turn it down, turn it down by two, you know. <laughs> we know he has a thing on his neck, because we Leia shut him down, through some switch right. on his neck in uh, in Empire, so. Right. Uh, right. Maybe. Maybe you open that panel on, on his back, and it's all like the settings mm. and, and stuff. You really like have to get in there, though. Yeah. <laughs> the, wait, they, avoid that the should be in this. If you, uh, like be it purely the end of the saga, they're just like, do we ever find his volume control? Like, wait, I think it's in here. And they open it up and there's also like the anxiety knob and it's cranked all the way up. They're like, oh, hey. Oh, bring that down a little bit. Turn that they down. They just leave it on. <laughs> right. They didn't. Annika had an oversight. He should have made that volume a little more noticeable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> a restraining bolt also could come in handy. Do you think we, we don't mm. see restraining bolts anymore in Star Wars after that initial mm. uh, thing? Just, just like, like a little collar thing. Do you think we'd be too if every time they like they zap they kept zapping three PO? Do you think people would yeah. be unsympathetic? Like if they was always being like, uh, 
Oh my, do you realize? Stop! <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like one of those dog time. collars. Where yeah. They, uh, Got to keep them on sight. Anyway, good old 3PO. Yes. Um, now we also have a scene with uh, FN2187 and TZ1719. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, which I got to... It, it, you know, I do like this movie a lot, as I've said. And I get... Um, I do understand the complaints that there's a lot of stuff thrown in here. Including that we just meet two new characters, and Zori and Jana. I always get there. I'm like, wait, is it Zana? But no, it's it's Jana. Even though she's T Z, there's no J in there. It's T Z one seven one nine. So not only do we know that, the makes sense. Obviously, that the the um, first order coming as an offshoot of the Empire uses the kind of uh, you know British or well, the global indicator for Z. They say it's Z. Um. But also that, um, I, I I don't know, like, where did she get her name from? We saw the other, like, Finn comes from FN, like, the other the other members of her party here of, uh, you know, Janet, Chrissy, and Jack or whatever, they're all from, they're all from their numbers and, and letters, but she's just like, I'm going to be, you know, Shirley. Like, she should have had, like, a, she should have <laughs> had, like, a funny, just, like, a plain old Earth name. I think we're going to have to wait till Janna, a Star Wars story, where, like, mm. as part of the thing, there's, like, a you know j n a fuel company or something like that and she's mm. like that's that will be my name and, and how she got her <laughs> goggles and also how she learned to ride the animals and that will all happen in the space of right in like two seconds weekend or two in one one drive somewhere <laughs> I, I mean it could be you know maybe she was in a thing with a bunch of other she said there are others of them so maybe there are other like there were a bunch of other tz people out there and they're like i'm tazy and i'm like oh i'm taz and they're like all right well like all the good tz names were taken up so she was like um janna she overslept it was like a little sister's name that she remembered Mm. oh there There you go go. or maybe it's her name because she actually says we were conscripted which makes it sound a little bit less we were kidnapped and and Hmm. put into slavery so maybe it was her name before she was uh and no one else seems to uh Either that or the other people just didn't like their names. Or they were assigned their numbers based on what their names were. You know oh, there you go. Like, your name is Roger, so you will... Well, that's a bad example. But, you know, yeah, anyway. <laughs> well, it's like our... our um, people are always astonished to learn that uh, when, when I first went to school... First went to college. You um, went to college. That is astonishing. I went to college. <laughs> <It's> astonishing. <laughs> um, but uh, it was the, the early days of the internet in a sense and that you could go you know there was internet and you can get an email address via the school uh, the academic computing facility um but you had to go like go find a nerd and request it like it wasn't you know nowadays it's just like they just assign you one right off the bat you get it it's on your id or whatever but this is like we had to like go find a find a nerd in the computer lab and be like <laughs> i want an email address and they'd be like okay hang on and then go like then set you up and give you this whole, all these instructions and all that. And, um, but your email address was your initials and then the, uh, last four digits of your social security number at NYU EDU at, well, AC, it, it, there were subdomains first. So it was ACF or IS2 NYU EDU. And so it was like, we were all just throwing around each other's like initials and social security numbers. <laughs> <laughs> wow but that means and, you had um, your own little name yeah it, well name. Uh, that would be my stormtrooper name i think would be somewhere some, what was so it? somewhere out of pjb yeah what I was it to... and then what's the first <laughs> per, first part of your social security number right was well, my stormtrooper name would be my mother's maiden name or my first car <laughs> which is my mother the car <laughs> um, <laughs> terrible thing to say about your mother but um yeah maybe maybe it is that maybe your stormtrooper name is based on your your original name that would be interesting yeah it it seems illogical like it seems like you would want all the tz's together like that would be kind of right. like this you know you could tell where you were from instantly based on your you know like uh area right. codes yeah you know. so well. um so finn figures out that she is a first order because they have first order parts She's like, oh, well, there's a crash ship over She's there. She's got first order parts, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yes. 
Well, I think this is a, um, I feel like it would have been stronger if Finn recognized something in her, something about her personally, like the way she said a word or a mannerism that like you get like, oh, the First Order always trains people to hand their things a certain way, where it would be kind of like mm. something more that not everyone would be able to pick up on. It's a minor thing, but it seems right. like a kind yeah. of, uh, you know, and it's a good opportunity for characterization as opposed to just, oh, right. we found a crash ship. So, anywho, next time. Yeah, and she, um, I agree. That would be interesting. It's like they both responded to something the same way, and then they looked at mm-hmm. each other like, wait a minute, why do you know that? Yeah. I feel like the purpose of introducing Zori Bliss and Janna is to set those fellows up with like dates. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, Pogue totally. now has a girl and now Finn gets a girl. Right. And so Ray can go become a monk or whatever. Right. And also they're not, it's purely like, well, okay, they're not, I know, you know, everybody's speculating if these guys are a couple, they're like, let's, let's, let's give them all girlfriends here. <laughs> Yeah. So we know everybody's Zori everybody's, Beard uh, and Jana Beard. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised Ray doesn't bust out. Uh, sorry, Finn doesn't bust out his whole. Oh, do you have a boyfriend? Kind of thing. When mm. he, the, you know, first thing he's first woman he saw when he got off the ship, he hit on her. But I guess he's calmed down a bit uh, since. Well, and he's still kind of obsessed with her too. Yeah, that's true. In a sense. Uh, yes. Um, but interestingly, she was uh, here's a kind of a tuckerization, I guess. Right. The um. Uh, she says that they were in, in, you know, they were stormtroopers and they mutinied at the Battle of Anset Island, um, which I looked up and uh, realized that Anset Island is, uh, Anset is an anagram of Staten. So Staten Island, which is where Chris Terrio grew up. So the Battle wow. of Anset Island. I'm just going to call it that from now on. For a lot, for years, Staten. I was calling it the Shaolin because of like Wu-Tang, but now I'm going to call, call it Anset <laughs> Island. <laughs> I like this. Um. Yes. Anyone else have anything uh, particular for this minute? Um. I. I think that there's some bit of acting that I'm not a big fan of, and it's when they both get comfy at the same time to start telling their story, like that deliberate sit down and face each other. It's such a. It is really jarring for me for some mm-hmm. reason. Um. I could not tell you why. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out why, but the fact that Finn is just like, wait a second, wait, what? And then gets up and sits down and like leans forward like he's about to, you know, get <laughs> storytelling time. And Tell then, me more. Yeah. Right. And then as soon as Jonna's like, she gets interested and then she turns her legs around and she gets in there just like leaning forward and talking to each other. It's like, this is how people have a conversation. <laughs> is what it felt like. Um, and there's a couple spots in that, in this movie, but they start like mirroring each other. I don't, really like it Hmm. but i do appreciate that they found each other and they have something in common yeah (laughs) like if they were at a party you'd be like hey you guys both used to be stormtroopers right and then you could walk away and let them talk (laughs) about really what was your number (laughs) no tz1719 i was fn 2187 (laughs) class of aby 23 (laughs) or whatever (laughs) Well, uh, anything, unless we have anything else for Minute 71, I guess we can uh, wrap this thing up. We have more fun on Kif Beer tomorrow, and we get to learn more about the secret origin of Janna from Staten Island. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, then. Um, well, uh, as mentioned, we are officially at the halfway point. Do you think it went by fast or slow so far? To me, it's going by really fast. It seems pretty fat. Well, it's like the movie. It's just action-packed. There's just always yeah. something going on. So it's before you know it, you're halfway through. Yeah, that's true. Uh, any speculation on what you think is going to happen in the second half of the movie? Hmm. I would have guessed that this, these characters didn't show up until the last third. Yeah, it feels later in the movie than it is. Yeah. I mean, granted, we do have, you know, several of those minutes are credits at the end. So <laughs> okay, it's including yeah. credits. But still, um, you know, it, it's... It, uh, it, uh, maybe there's an awful lot, uh, I think the very end, you know, just, I'm going meta. I'm not talking about what's going to happen in the movie. I'm talking about what we're going to experience. I think we're going to experience that it's going to, um, the pace is going to slow down for us. There's not going to be as much going on in the end of the movie because it's just going to be cutting between scenes of 
already established. Like they're not jumping around the whole universe by right. the end. They're mostly all in, in one place. Mostly yeah. in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. So cut back to Princess we'll Leia every now, every once in a while. Hmm. Princess Leia has a comeback. <laughs> He'll call it that. Hmm. <laughs> Well, uh, since it is halfway, that means there's, uh, if you want to leave an eight-day Greedo call, you better get cracking. Call our hotline, Eight Day Greedo, and leave a short, some of your short, funny thoughts on the Rise of Skywalker. Maybe, uh, how do you feel about Lando showing up with to save the day at the end? How do you feel about Lando and Jenna, them hinting that they are uh, relatives? All that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, Call Eight Day Greedo, leave us a message, and then come back here tomorrow for another Star tomorrow. Wars. Tomorrow. Star Wars now.